go ahead and start my little presentation. Uh, let me pull up the right screen. I'm going to go video off while I eat. <laughs> uh, no problem. Okay. Does everyone see my um, AWS account screen? Yep. Perfect. So what I wanted to talk about, and this is a redo of this parallel talk that I gave in the fall, uh, but we forgot to turn on the recording. So we wanted to go ahead and do it again so we could get it recorded to put with our collection. Uh, so I'm focusing on how do you use AWS services through APIs. Uh, this will be done in Python. Um, so if you use something else, you can translate it over into that. Um, AWS, though, in addition to having really great services, they have really great documentation. So it's pretty easy to find examples in multiple languages of whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, so if you're not familiar with Amazon AWS services, um, this is actually more than half of their profit model now is selling AWS services. So you can just imagine, if you think how much money Amazon, the marketplace makes, <laughs> they make more than that now off of their web services. Uh, but they offer a lot of different web services. Most of them I have never even heard of. Um, so this is their current listing of AWS services. They break it into some useful chunks. Um, so it, you can do computing. I know that Liz um, is learning to do EC2. EC2. Um, they also have several other computing platforms if you want to use their really, really fast computers um, to do things. You can also access those through APIs, similar to how we're going to access some of the other services. Um, they have blockchain machine learning services. Um, they have AR, VR services. And those are all services that I do not use. Um, but some of my students use a few of them, especially the machine learning platform ones. So the ones I'm gonna talk about, um, first I'm gonna talk about their storage solution or one of their storage solution. Um, probably their biggest one is for commercial, for non-commercial applications. It's the S3 service, this storage S3. And then I'm also gonna talk about Amazon Poly, which is their text to voice. And they have the transcribe, which is their voice to transcription. So voice to text. And we'll access those three services via the API um, so that you can just build it right into what you're doing. Uh, and again, this will be in Python, but you could do it in others um, just as easily. Um, so yeah, there's are a whole variety of them. If you're ever interested in picking and choosing through some, it's pretty amazing all the different services they have. And they're each pretty well built out. And they have, again, really good documentation from my experience with each one of these. So we'll be using that. And when you sign up to get an AWS account, you can either get your AWS account through your Amazon account which is the easiest way. Um, it just links it right to your credit cards. Um, and when you get into their services, each of their services has different subscription rates. Um, so like, for example, if I go into S3, um, S3 is set up and you can learn more about it. You can do a lot of free storage. Um, it's actually, the way that they do it is kind of interesting. You pay not just for the storage, but for the amount of access to that storage. So even if you have a small amount, if it's being frequently accessed by people, then it can end up costing you more. Um, but all in all, it's fairly cheap. Um, I don't see the tab right now in front of me for what the pricing setup for S3 is. but. Um, 
I don't think I've ever had to pay for anything on S3, even with the different things I've done. So you can get a lot for free. S3, just before we go into Python to start working with it, I want to tell you that, so instead of having folders, they have buckets, but they're basically folders. So like I set up this bucket or folder and I called it the AWS GW coders bucket. And if you go into it, there are files in there. Um, and like other folders, I can bring down the file, I can download them, I can take actions so I can copy, move, download, delete, um, add metadata and stuff. And I can create folders within my bucket, um, though I just think of a bucket as just another folder. But that's how they refer to it, and we'll have to refer to it in the code by the name of the bucket as well. Um, and then you can find out all types of information about how much you've accessed, how it's being managed, who has different permissions. Um, so yeah, S3 is quite convenient, especially if you're going to host files that are going to be served um, online. It's a lot faster than serving them on local servers, I find. Um, so once you set up your AWS account, you'll get um, a uh, two set key for your login as an API. So just like all or most all APIs, you have to have a key to get access to it. There are some public APIs um, that are a useful way to play and pull down information and stuff um, into your code just to get used to it. But most of the ones that you'll probably want to use are then I have some type of key mechanism that you can get. And you get that through your account settings, um, my security credentials. I'm not gonna click on it because I don't remember when it pops up and shows them. And since this will be on YouTube, I really don't want those numbers showing on YouTube uh, because it's linked to my credit card. So <laughs> if it gets used a lot, then I would start to notice. So once we then move over to um, Python, and I'm going to use DeepNote for this, which is just um, another way of accessing Jupyter Notebooks. You could also do this through the GW um, Jupyter Hub. You can get to at go.gw.edu slash Jupyter um, or JHub, both take you to the same place. Um, but this is just another service that allows you to run Jupyter Notebooks. Um, I'm using it because I wanted to set up an environment for this um, demonstration in a certain way, and I thought this would be easier. You could also do the same in Colab um, if you were just wanting to play. So if you go to colab.google.com, you can also access Jupyter Notebooks to do similar to this. Um, so as I said, you'll get an access key um, that you'll use, and you'll have a secret access key. So one is the public key and one is the secret key. Uh, you don't want to keep these um, in a public place. That's why you can't see what my keys are. I put them into the operating environment um, when I started up this server on DeepNote. Um, as a variable, and then I'm just pulling those as environmental variables. This is something new that um, I didn't know you could do. I usually keep them in a separate folder, and then I call the folder. But then I was playing around and looking at some stuff, and they said, oh, you should just keep them in your environment. Then you can use them in all your different um, code that's running on the same environment. See, so they're environment variables, which is a new concept to me. So I was glad to learn that. You just call it with the OS um, package, and then you can call whichever variables you want. So I'll run that to make sure that they're loaded. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to upload a file to that S3 storage area, and we're going to do that from here in Python. Uh, so we have to import a couple of packages um, so that this can run. Um, the BOTO, B-O-T-O, um, these are the packages that run the Amazon AWS um, 
access points to their API. They have a, a newer one, I believe, um, but these are the ones that work for me. So I just leave with these. Um, so the Boto 3 is the primary one. It can access, I think, all their different services. And then within that, um, within the older, the first Boto, they also had an S3. And I don't know, I guess I could probably switch over and do Boto 3.S3 and then do that to get the keys, um, how to access with the keys. But I just have never updated the code. Um, but once you have the packages installed, then these are what's they give you access to be able to use the AWS API. Um, and so the first thing that we want to do is we want to establish that connection and we'll use our keys to tell it who we are so that it connects us um, to the right places within AWS with our right level of permissions. So as you can see, I just call my variables here. Um, it brings in my codes from the environment then, and it sends those as arguments to the Boto uh, connecting to the S3. So I'm telling it which one of those many AWS services I want to connect to in order to do what I'm gonna do. And it tells what my, both my access code and then the secret access code, um, the kind of the password to do that. As we saw then, once we um, are trying to access something in S3 on those servers, I have to tell it what folder I want to go into. So I um, name a variable bucket and I say that's to connect um, using, see the connect, connect up here, using my connection to S3. And I want to access the folder or bucket that I named AWS GW coders bucket. So just as a reminder, that was this bucket right here that we wanted to have access to. Um, so depending on what you're doing, you can create many of these. When you create these buckets, you can also tell it which region you want to use it with. Um, all of these I created on the East Coast, but they have ones like actually, Think if I create a bucket. So yeah, you can host Ohio, California, Oregon, the Pacific, Europe. So depending on where you think your main access will be from, you want to host closest to that. So Northern Virginia is the obvious choice for this. So that will then give us access into that bucket. And I'm gonna upload a file into that bucket. So I just chose an MP3 that I had on my desktop. Um, and so I put it into the folder where my code is. So you can see I have a copy of it here. It won't let me open it, but I have a copy in the same place. That's why I don't have a file path. But if I wanted to pull it off of my desktop, then I could put in desktop like that. Um, though I'd have to have the longer file path for it. I don't think that's actually the file path to my desktop. Um, but since it's in the same folder, I don't have to have any file path. And I'm going to tell it when it's um, uploading to print that it's uploading to my S3 bucket. Um, so this is optional code that if you want to set up a function, um, so I created a function it tells me the percent of the upload. Um, so it takes the complete and the total. And then as it writes it, it um, will do little dots. That's what the little dot here is to go across showing that it is uploading the file. Um, so I have all my variables set now. I have my bucket, my test file. Um, I'm connected to the AWS. So what I now want to do is I want to um, set up what is the file that I'm going to put into it, and I'm going to set the content. So I'm going to send my test file. I'm also going to run my little piece that says how it's uploading, um, and it's out of 10. So the number of CBs is total of 10. Um, and so this will now upload this file. Um, up to it. So if I run it, 
you can see it went fast um, and it said it was uploading and then it uploaded. Now, if I go into my bucket, there it is. I just uploaded it on the 16th. Um, yeah. Oh, it's on a different time. So, but yeah. So we should be good to go. Um, now I have uploaded a file up into um, the AWS server. So now it's hosting that there. So you can see it's real easy to move files back and forth. Um, and so what we'll do with the next one then is we'll actually start to use a file to do something different with, or maybe that's the third demo part of this. I guess before I go on, does anyone have questions about that code? Okay, hearing none. Um, so the next part of AWS I wanna show how to use is the AWS poly system. Um, kind of like Polly wants a cracker, I guess. And this is text to speech. Um, so when you set up with the Polly one, um, you, so you'll again use Boto or Boto three in this case. Um, whereas above, I just wanted to connect to S3. Um, when I wanna create a session with Polly, since it's gonna do some passing back and forth, it's not just a one-way interaction. I want to tell it the session. Again, I give it my IDs. I also tell it where I want it to run this service since it's going to be computing. Um, so I want to compute it close to home again. So I'm going to compute Polly this time um, on that same server, the East one, which is Northern Virginia. And Within Boto3, I'm going to use Poly. So again, that's saying that within all these services, the one I want to use is the Poly service um, right up here. So Poly is this text-to-speech service. Um, you can play with it. Uh, I didn't set up my audio, I don't think, for this. You may not hear it. Um, but I can change any of this. So hi, my name is Ryan. You probably didn't hear it, right? Yeah, when I logged in, I didn't set my speaker to be in the presentation. Um, but you can set the voice then. So you, yeah, this might be worth playing. So let me see if I remember how to do that. Um, I think if you stop share and reshare, it'll give you that opportunity. I thought there was an easy way to do it though. Oh, oh. share sound. Okay. okay, now let's see if it works. Hi, my name is Ryan. I will read any text you type here. Um, so then you can try like, if I decide that I want to. Hi, them. my name is Ryan. I will read any text you type here. And you can do all of this kind of playing around with it for free. You don't. Um, and you get, oh, I forget how many thousands of characters for free before they start charging you each month. Um, so you can do quite a bit of this. Um, you can do quite a few poly files before you're getting charged. Um, you can also, there's different pricing structures depending on if you're using their standard natural language processing or if you want to use their more advanced, their neural ones. Um, there is some difference in the quality. So you can hear, let's see if Matthew sounds different. Hi, my name is Ryan. I will read any text you type here. Okay, so that was the expensive one now. Hi, my name is Ryan. I will read any text you type here. So it's a little slicker. Um, it has less um, different parts to it. An interesting part that I haven't played with is you can actually customize, like you can add accents and pronunciation differences. Um, you can upload those or you can um, use different ones that they have too. So, 
there's lots of things. Like if you wanted Matthew to have a slight Southern draw, or if you wanted someone to have an accent, um, like they're from a different country, you can do that. So yeah, you can also set different languages. Um, they don't do every language, but you can see they do quite a few languages. So you can try German, I guess. Hi, my name is Ryan. I will read any text you type here. Oh yeah, well, I typed it, yeah. yeah. I typed it in English, so, but if I, I guess if I had typed it in German, it would have said it in German. Um, but you can play around with this. Um, different, as you can see, it changes the number of voices available too. So let's see. Hi, my name is Ryan. I will read any text you type here. So there's lots of playing you can do, and you can set all of these options in your API. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to show you that. Um, and that's basically what we'll do is we'll now use poly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a name. I'll just put in John. Um, and then the text I wanna use is welcome to GW coders um, and John. This week we're focusing on AWS Poly, I guess I should say. So, and I'm just um, putting the X variable in, it would probably be just as easy not to do it as a variable, but I thought that would be one way of doing it so we could change it around. So then to use the API piece, um, so what I have to do is I have to use the Poly client and what I wanted to do is synthesize speech for me. It can do other things, but synthesize speech is the main purpose. Um, I then I use the neuro engine. So I'm gonna use the slightly more expensive engine. Um, and when I say slightly more expensive, I can try to bring up the price sheet. Even if you do end up paying, it's like, I think it's eight one hundredths of a cent per word or something like that. It's really a small amount. So you could do a whole lot of text to voice and it would only cost you like five bucks. Um, so it's not an expensive service. Um, I'm gonna select the voice, Joanna. So the voice from what we had before. I'm gonna output it as an MP3 file. You can also output it as WAV or OGG or a variety of formats. And I'm telling it what it's getting is it's going to get text. Um, and I'm trying to remember what the text coders part is. Yeah, I don't remember what the text coders part is of this. Let's see if it tells me. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, is that your variable that you defined above? Oh, you're right, it is. So the text I'm submitting is that. <laughs> Yeah, that's important. You have to tell it what it's gonna say. Um, and so then it's, I'm gonna have it write it as a file. Um, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and have it write as a file, you know, just to show that it still works. I'll just make it a different file. And then I'll play that file down here at the bottom. Um, you could just, um, well, I guess you would wanna write it as a file, I'm going to write it to here. You could also write it to AWS S3 and save it to your um, S3 folder rather than writing it to some other folder. So that's how you can start to integrate some of these. Um, and so it's going to stream it and then close it. So it's going to write the file, then it's going to read the audio, and then it's going to close this out. And we'll make sure that it works. So it said it worked. Um, let's see if it plays. Welcome to GW Coders and Plus X Plus. This week we are focusing on AWS Poly. Uh, that's not right. Um, oh. Oh, I know. I didn't run this cell, so that's why. Welcome to GW Coders. I am John. This week we are focusing on AWS Poly. So as you can see, it um, created the file and then made it 
um, easy for us to access an MP3 of that text. Um, so you could use this in a variety of formats. I've been playing around with using it um, in different types of like chatbots if I wanted to instantaneously create text. Um, I use this to create audio that then gets put into podcasts sometimes. So you can do a variety of things pretty quickly and on the fly with this. Um, this is really short and it only took a couple of seconds to do. Um, and even if I've written a full paragraph, it usually downloads in under two seconds, I would say. So it's pretty quick service. Um, it doesn't take a whole long for time for it to create these MP3 files. It might take longer if you're doing wave because waves are more file intensive. Um, so it may take a little while, but still it'll be fast. So you can use it in a real time service type of way if you're thinking of that type of application. So that allowed us to take uh, text and turn it into voice. They also have the opposite, which is quite useful too, which is to take some text and, and to take some voice and then turn it into a transcript. Um, and you can do this for research purposes potentially or for a variety of purposes. You can take any audio you want basically, and it will um, do a pretty good job. I can't say it's absolutely the best transcriber, but um, it's better than most transcription services. We, for our podcast, we actually use one called Otter, which does a little better job we find. But some of that could be that um, since our podcast is about science, it might be better trained on scientific terminology. And that's why we get better performance. Uh, I don't know what AWS used to train their transcription service. Um, so to do this, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pull a file from the AWS bucket to show how that works. Um, so instead of um, instead of pulling a file from deep note to upload and then have it transcribe, I'm just going to pull it from the S3 server to transcribe. So the first thing after I connect, I'm then I'm first going to connect to S3. And I'm then uh, um, make sure I have that file uploaded, the file I want to upload. And so I'll go ahead and upload that file. So actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll update it to be the one that we just made with John's name instead of the test file I did the other day. So this is the same script that we ran before. And so now if I go back to my AWS S3, if everything went as planned, yep, there's the file that we just uploaded, the sample today dash one, which we just made this was Polly saying that, um, welcome to Coder, she is John. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to transcribe that file um, and bring back the text of it. Uh, now, this obviously isn't that interesting because we just wrote the text of it. So we're just bringing back what we wrote. Um, but the same application applies. So this time, instead of using the poly client, we're then going to use the transcribe client. So if we go back to AWS and we go to transcribe, Here's the transcription client. Um, they haven't uploaded anything too recently. But. So what we'll do, so we'll bring in a couple of different packages um, in order to, so what it will do is it will transcribe the file that we send, but it's in a have it as a JSON file. And so we have to import JSON in order to, um, bring down the file in a way that can be read then within Python. So that's why we bring in Python and we'll see why we bring in time as we get down later. 
So again, we'll connect to their server. We'll put in our keys. We'll say that we want to use transcribe. We want to use the East Coast servers. Um, we're going to name the job. Um, so we'll call it sample transcription for today. Um, and we'll tell it what is the file that we want it to transcribe. So I take that AWS S3 file. So it's sitting in this bucket on S3 at amazonaws.com. And this is the file. Actually, we wanted to do dash one. So I'll put that in. So that's just setting up our variables. Now, when we set up our transcription job, this is where you get into the details of um, what it is that you want it to do. So we have to give it a name. So that's why we came up with job name. You have to give it a name. And that's what will pop up when we see the transcription later on. Um, we also have to tell it what type of file it's getting. It's getting a media file, and it's going to get it from this UR, URI or URL. Um, the format that it's coming in, it's then coming in S3. And the language that we're using, this um, it's an English language file. So you, if you had British English or if you had Chinese or something, you could tell it which language to expect. Um, now, the last part is this is optional, but if you have multiple speakers on a file, you can set it to break the speakers apart. So it'll say like speaker one, speaker two. Um, so in this case, I set it to have two different speakers potentially and to label them. Uh, now, of course, since we're only using the file from Polly, it's just going to have one speaker. So this isn't going to do too much. It does a pretty good job of that speaker breaking apart, especially if the voices are distinct and different. Um, sometimes it'll pick up your own voice as having like being two different ones. Um, but then you can just edit it in your um, transcript file anyway. So this will allow us to see that the process is taking place. Um, so this is optional and you don't have to see, but this will update every 20 seconds or 20 milliseconds, I believe. Um, and then keep telling you that it's working on the file. You can see down here at the bottom, last time I ran it, it just kept telling me it's being processed, being processed, being processed. Um, and then it will tell you when you're done. And then once it's done, so once the job is complete, then what I wanted to do is I wanted to go back and get the file, um, open the URL, so download the file, typical download request um, for getting files in Python. I know it's going to be a JSON file, so I want to use JSON loads to load the file and then dump the file as text. Um, and then I can write the file um, so that I have the file to have as a download. So now if we run this, and all runs as planned, oh, I guess it is 20 seconds. Sleep is in seconds, not in milliseconds. So you can see we're 11 seconds in, and now if it still isn't done, it's going to tell us that it's still active. So doing a transcription does take longer. Um, so I would say like, uh, if I have 10 minutes of audio, it's usually at least five minutes to transcribe it. Um, so you do have to be more patient, whereas the other you could um, get it almost instantaneously. With transcription, you do have to wait a while. So it processed, processed, and now this is the um, JSON file that has the transcript in it. It also
Yeah, so that's it. Uh, does anyone have questions? If you haven't played with APIs, it's a fairly good API to play with. Again, they have really good documentation and there are lots of examples on websites. Um, so it's kind of an easy one to play with to do some interesting things that and, and these are just three of their many, many services, and you can access them all through a similar process using Boto and Boto3. Do you know if there, um, what support there might be for DW students who want to use this more for projects? I mean, they're thinking about AWS services in general. Yeah, I don't, I assume they have student level accounts that play, pay lower rates. We probably have something through the university. Um, I know that they're, I mean, AWS people are around there. They have a headquarters in Arlington. Um, so many of our faculty know people who work with AWS. Um, but yeah, they seem, if you're doing something interesting, they also have a variety of grant programs I've heard about. Mm -hmm. I've never applied for one um, where you can apply for a grant to get free AWS services to do whatever work it is that they deem it's of interest. I know that they also teamed up with NSF last year um, to offer a grant opportunity where basically NSF gave you money and Amazon gave you free AWS services to do your projects on. Um, so yeah, there's a variety of ways to use it. If anyone's interested, um, Dr. Metzger is friends with one of the AWS people, and I could put you in touch if you had a project that you wanted to talk about that uh, might make use of these services at a rate that isn't this gonna fall into their free zone anyway, or $5. Uh, I think with everything I've done, I've never paid more in total than like $5 if you added it all up. And I play around with it quite a bit. So they offer a lot for free. They make their money off of companies um, that run all their services off of AWS and all their websites and little projects like this. That's they don't even worry about us. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I guess we can call a wrap to the spring um, 2021 GW coders then. If you want to turn off the recording, John.